All right, what we are going to do here is we are going to be talking about um, sampling distributions and this idea of a sampling distribution. Uh, first off, when we talk about distributions, we talked about several different types of distributions. Um, we had a binomial, right? Nomial distribution. Okay, we have a geometric distribution. Okay, um, and now we are going to have a sampling distribution. Okay, a sampling distribution. Now, in each one of these, in the previous chapters, binomial and geometric, um, these were both discrete. Okay, discrete. Okay, discrete. And in these discrete um, values, what we have is um, values that could not be uh, individual lengths or, or whatnot, but we have um, a discrete value in here. Okay, um, so they're they're all. Um, by tables of singular values or n values that are integers. Okay, or sorry, inputs that are possibly integers or decimals. All right, are but are discrete. Okay, and now we're going to talk about a sampling distribution. Now, when you're talking about distributions, okay, if you go back to in the beginning, we can um, identify, all right, or picture these distributions in several different ways. Okay, and one thing when we talk about distributions is we want to describe these distributions. Okay, we want to be able to describe the distributions. And if you recall, um, you probably heard if you're in AP Stats, this thing called socks. Okay, or shape, outliers, center, and spread. All right, shape, outliers, center, and spread. All right, now when we talk about socks, okay is when we're talking about a sampling distribution, we know a sampling distribution are all the possible samples um, of a certain population that are recorded in a, dis, um, a display, okay? And just usually a dot plot or a histogram, or it could be something. Now, the question is, how do we identify the shape? If there's any, well, I don't know if there's any shape. Outliers, uh, center, or spread of this distribution. Well, here we go. Well, how do we find the center? Well, when you're talking about a sampling distribution, and we're talking about proportions, okay, P being proportions, is that we know that the um, sampling distribution mean, and this is the reach for the mean, okay, of P hat, so our statistic, all right? So the sampling distribution mean is gonna equal the true, all right, um, proportion. And that's what we found in our previous example. So if we had all the possible examples, we understand if we added the sums of those, the means of that those sampling proportions would actually equal the true proportion of the entire population. Okay, proportion of population. Well, that's cool. Um, now, when we talk about spread, um, we are talking about a standard deviation. Okay, standard deviation. Now, in order to figure out the standard deviation, one key thing we have to know is that this has to be independent in order to figure out the standard deviation, okay, standard deviation. Because when we're finding the standard deviation, um, we're gonna try to figure out, try to figure out uh, this, uh, these, these values right here, and we wanna make sure that it is independent. So to keep it, make sure that it's independent. We learned from binomial, which is sampling distribution that are very similar to binomial, um, in that we can use a 10% condition. All right, so that means if our n value, the pick of our sample, so this is the sample size, okay it is less than all right 10 percent of the population size that we're taking the sample from then we have independence and so we can find the spread of this um, sampling distribution by taking p all right times one minus p divided by our sample size n okay and so that's our spread now the thing is how do we figure out the shape Okay, now shape. Now, generally what we can do is we can plot a bunch of different samples and create a, um, a sample distribution, what it looks like, but we can also determine if the shape is approximately normal, all right? If the shape is approximately normal, okay? So if we're shape, let me just put the center there, all right? If our shape is normal, we can, once again, because it's very similar to binomial, we can use what's known as the large counts condition. And so if our n value times our p is greater than or equal to 10, and our n times one minus p is greater than or equal to 10, we know we can use large counts, and therefore the shape of our sampling distribution will be approximately normal. And that, if we know it's approximately normal, then we can go to this, is that we can figure out some probabilities. And this is where it gets cool. Yeah, all right. So if sampling distribution of our sample 
proportion is approximately normal, then we can figure out, all right, um, using Z or standard scores, so we can change this by taking our um, observed value minus our proportion or parameter divided by the standard deviation um, of our, our sampling distribution, which is down here. We can also use normal CDF and all its glory. All right. Um, and you are familiar with that, where we take our lower bound and we take our upper bound, and then we have to take our mean and our standard deviation, and we do that. Okay. And we can also do that. So all these things coming back full circle. All right. And um, applying it now to sampling distributions. Okay, so let's go, for example, let's talk about this. So let's just check out understanding. Let's do a problem real quick, understanding this. So suppose that 75% of the young adults, internet users, ages 18 to 29, watch online videos. A polling organization contacts an SRS of 1,000 young adults. So our N value in this case is 1,000. If you just look at this, our P value, it appears to be 0.75, all right, um, of young internet users that watch videos online videos. All right, so now, calculus proportion here. So identify the mean and sampling distribution of our p hat. So the mean, so in case our center of our sampling distribution, okay, is going to equal p, right? Because if we truly had that, so we know that that's going to equal 0.75. Well, that's pretty easy. Okay, so that's our center. Next thing, we want to calculate and interpret our standard deviation. All right, so that's our spread, all right, of our sampling distribution. Well, Right now, we know that we can figure out our sampling distribution, all right, standard deviation, by taking P times 1 minus P over N, okay, if it is independent, all right, independent, okay, so let's see if it's independent, so we're going to use a 10% rule, all right, 10% condition for this, and our N value of 1,000 is that less than 10%, all right, of all and what do we got here all right all young adult internet users um ages 18 to 29 so all young adult adult uh, internet users Inter internet users um, ages what was that again um 18 to 29 all right so 18 to 29 years of age okay um yeah, I think it is. All right, so we can use this. And so going through here, um, we can set this up. We can take the square root of 0.75 times 0.25 divided by 1,000. Okay, so what's going to happen here? All right, well, right here we take the square root, and we take 0.75, and we multiply that by, that by 0.25, and we divide that by 1,000. And what you have is, all right, a value of 0.013. Seven. We'll round that to sort of zero right there, one, three, seven. Hopefully, you got that same answer. Now, let's interpret this. All right, so I'll interpret this. So, what is the standard deviation? Well, we know standard deviation is the typical variation from the mean. And so, what we know is that, um, is that a, that, um, uh, a sampling distribution all right assembly distribution um or i should say how we say this all right um when we get a sample all right um a sample of 1000 young adults all right um a sample of young adults who watch online videos. All right, young adults, and then we will put in say, ages 18 to 29, but a sample of 1,000 young adults um, who watch online videos. Um, that proportion, that proportion will typically very um very about um very as 0 0.0137 from the true proportion of 0.75 okay 
Okay, so that's what we know. So if you took a sample of 1,000 young adults um, who watch online videos, that portion will typically vary 0.1037 from the true proportion of 0.75. Okay, so that's what we know because we know the sampling proportion is equal to the true proportion. Um, that's what we know. So from here, let's think about this. Now, now we did the, sh uh, the center, the, the spread, and now we're looking at the shape. Okay, so now is the sampling distribution approximately normal? So is the shape of this distribution approximately normal? Okay, so if it's approximately normal, we're going to use what's known as a large count condition. All right, large count condition. So what we want to know is, is 1,000 times 0.75, is that greater than or equal to 10? And if we know that 1,000, all right, times 0.25, all right, 25, is that going to be greater than or equal to 10? Well, the answer is yes and yes. So guess what? Um, yeah, it's approximately normal. So the shape, shape of the sampling distribution is approximately normal. All right, cool beans, cool beans. All right, so that's cool. And now the question is this. Um, find the probability that the random sample of 1,000 young adults will result within two percentage points of the true value. Okay, so if I'm just going to graph this out. So no, knowing that we know this is approximately normal, and we're going to take all of our values. So we're going to use 0.75, all right, because that's our p-value. Um, we're going to take our standard deviation of 0.0137. All right, got that right there. Um, we know that 0 0.75 is there. And now we're going to two percentage points. So two percentage points, this is 75%. Um, we're talking about um, 77%. And we're talking about 73%. So we're looking at 0.77 and another one at 0.73. All right. And so what we're looking for is what is this area in between? All right. And so how could we do this? Well, what we could do is we could find the z-score for each one of these values. So if we wanted to find that, we could go z-score of 0.73 minus 0.75 divided by 0.0137 and find that z-score. And then we can find the z-score of the other one, which is 0.77 minus 0.75 over 0.0137. And then we use our table A, all right, then use table A and take out the difference. So we would take this, um, this area, this percentile area minus this percentile area, and we would get that values. Um, another faster, more efficient way is using our calculator. So if you use your calculator, okay, so to find out what this probability is of our p hat, all right, being greater than or equal to 0.73, and I'm just going to write this out, and this one being greater than or equal to 2.77, all right, we would use normal CDF, all right, normal CDF, all right? And our lower limit is going to be 0.73. Our upper limit is going to be 0.77. Our mean, all right, we know our mean is going to be 0.75, and we have our standard deviation, which is going to be 0.0137. Now, on the AP test, make sure that you label these or that it is properly labeled so you know what these are and they can identify that. And so from here, we can put this in our calculators. And if you go second VARs, go down to normal CDF, and you put in 0.73, comma, 0.77, comma. All right, and we got 0.75, comma, and 0.0137. Okay, and what we get is a value of, all right, 0.856. I'm going to say that. So about 85.6%. All right, um, so that is find the probability that that 85.6 percent of all the random samples of a thousand results will result in two percentage points um, of the true value of 0.75. All right, cool. All right, one final question for us is if the sampling size were 9,000, so we increase the sampling size rather than a thousand, how would this change the sampling distribution? Now, since we're talking about a distribution, remember this is asking us how is this changing the center? How is this changing the spread? And does it change the shape, all right, of this distribution? Or if you want to just take the socks, maybe we'll go shape first. Well, we know that um, by increasing this, um, is this going to remain approximately normal? So we would say yes, all right? 
we could go and say 0.75 times 9,000. All right, yes, definitely is going to be greater than 10. 0.25, um, 9,000, so we can greater than equal to 10. That's going to be the same. So yes, it's going to be approximately normal. So it remains approximately normal. All right. All right. The center, all right, of this right here is going to remain the p-value. So that's going to remain 0.75 because um, just by increasing this, we know that our sampling distribution will not change. It's just going to be um, the same value there. However, our spread, our variation, so our spread or variation from the mean of the true mean, that will change and actually will get better. All right. And so, um, so actually the spread, all right, the standard deviation, the standard deviation, all right, so the center um, 0.75 remains the same. The same, all right, approximately normal. So the shape remains the same. However, the spread or the standard deviation, all right, the, the, of 9,000, all right, will be less than the standard deviation of our sample infinite of 1,000, okay? And we can verify this because if you compare these two different values, all right, the square root of 0.75 over 0.25, all right, divided by 1,000, all right, is definitely going to be greater than the square root of 0.75 times 0.25 over 9,000. And you can put that in your calculator and verify that. All right, make sure you just put 1,000, not 90,000. All right, so you have that. But that, yeah, that's definitely going to be greater. Okay, and so that's what we know. Because we know that when we increase the sample size, it's going to decrease um, our variation. Okay, well, there we go. Um, that is the idea of sampling distributions and talking about the center all right, spread and the shape and how we can figure probabilities with that. All right, good luck and God bless in the rest of your problems.